It's been a bit of a meme on this channel that powerlifters don't need direct ab work. Abs are for 8% body fat, beach goers, and we need a little bit of fluff to be able to move the weight up and down. Now, while I still think that that is true for crunches, I do understand that stability and bracing work for the core is incredibly important. And while it has been a meme that I don't train it, of course I do, because it has had direct carryover to the strength of my squat and my deadlift, and it has made me a better power lifter, and these three exercises that I'm gonna discuss with you today will make you a better power lifter as well. So let's get right into it with our first exercise, the pal-off press. The pal-off press is something that I feel goes a little bit unnoticed in your regular gym circles, but with power lifters, it has been a great tool to increase core stability because it is an anti-rotational movement, meaning it is going to try and move you to rotate you and you are going to work against that rotation. Very similar to when you're in a squat and the weight may be trying to force you forward, you are going to fight against being forced forward to maintain your neutral spine and to hit the lift effectively so that you can put up the most weight. Now, the reason that I love this exercise is that it can be done almost anywhere and it is very versatile. It can be done banded, it can be done with a cable stack, it can be done high to low, low to high on your knees. There are many regressions and progressions to make it simpler or harder as you get stronger with it. It's just an overall great exercise that you can utilize to create stronger core musculature and to work on your anti-rotational strength. Something that I really love to do as I've gotten stronger and stronger with this exercise is to increase my time under tension. So in Instead of going press out with a one second cadence and come back in with a one second cadence, I love to do a press out with a three second cadence, one, two, three, with a big breath and brace, similar to how I would before I go for a squat, and then retract with a three second cadence without blowing out my breath. So overall, I'm bracing for six seconds, which I found to be equivalent to the amount of time that I hold for an 80, 85%, 90% squat attempt. It's all about direct carryover with these core exercises. Again, a crunch may not directly carry over to your squat or your deadlift or your bracing pattern, but a pal-off press will, and that's why I program them, and I think that you should program them as well. Speaking of direct carryover, my next favorite core exercise is the kettlebell dead bug pullover. Now, the bodyweight dead bug is one of my favorite exercises as a warm-up tool and one that I use before every big training day. The first thing I do when I come into the gym is I warm my body up on the bike for a little bit and then I go into some dead bugs, some bird dogs, the McGill Big Three, if you will. I have found that weighting the dead bug pullovers have been not only a great tool to brace my core, but also to increase strength in my upper back and my hips because there's a lot of moving parts that you want to keep stable and rigid and train through a range of motion and adding the kettlebell on top of it is going to help you progress further and strengthen further. This exercise is the definition of constant tension if you are performing it properly. You wanna maintain a solid brace in the core, a nice neutral spine, you wanna tighten and strengthen the upper back and allow your legs to go out slowly and deliberately and then come back in slowly and deliberately. There is, should be no quick jerky movements Everything should be under control and you should relish the pain and the time under tension that you get from this exercise. We are in the gym to work hard, not to work fast. So take your time with this exercise, breathe properly, brace properly, start with a weight that is appropriate to you and build from there. Finally, we reach an old staple in the fitness world, the plank. And if you've ever questioned whether or not time is relative, get down on the floor and do a plank for about a minute and tell me that that was not the longest minute of your life. This exercise is one of my favorites because it can be done almost anywhere. You have five minutes in between meetings, hit a couple of planks. Waiting for the water to boil so you can throw your pasta in, Let's plank, baby. I guess probably shouldn't be doing it in a moving vehicle, but you know, if you can figure out how to get it done safely, you know, for legal purposes, safely, go ahead and do that too. I really enjoy the plank because I find it incredibly challenging. It's not an exercise that I'm very good at, but I enjoy building my time up over different sessions and practicing to get better. Also, I've seen a direct carry over to my squat with my bracing patterns, and I find that my posture is a little bit better from planking, just kind of carrying myself more upright, bracing my core as I pick things up in my day-to-day -day life. 
Progression and regression is very simple with the plank. If you are finding it difficult to hold that 90 degrees directly on the floor, then you can change your angle and go up a little bit higher on the back of a couch, hold yourself up on your hands instead of your elbows. If you feel like it's a little too simple, you can create an unstable environment, doing it on a medicine ball or a BOSU ball, something like that, or you can have someone stack plates on your back and just get even stronger as you go. I think that everybody should be performing the plank, not just people that are powerlifting, but if you are powerlifting, this exercise is going to give you the most bang for your buck. It's a great tool to use. It doesn't take a lot out of recovery and it can be done three or four times a week. It's really, really solid and I encourage you to give it a shot. These three exercises are incredible for core strength and stability, but I have just scratched the surface. So if I missed one of your favorites, go ahead and yell at me in the comments. I'm trying to get my core stronger and I hope you will too. Let's get a discussion going down there. The core is taken care of, but your legs still may be a little bit suspect. You have to click this video right here to find some of my favorite squat specific accessories to give you the best squat of your life. And until next time, folks, get strong and stay strong. Peace.